Hello everyone, welcome back. Last time we went over how you can calculate the value of a state using Bellman equation when the actions are probabilistic. If you haven't checked that video out, then you can check the link on the top right of your screen. Also, almost 98% of you guys are not subscribed. So if you are interested in building smarter agents or mastering the reinforcement learning, then hit that subscribe button. It is a big motivator to keep making these videos. All right, with that out of the way, let's begin. In reinforcement learning, there are two major ways to train your agent, value-based methods and action-based methods. In value-based methods, you first calculate the value of all possible actions and then take the action which corresponds to the maximum value. This approach allows agents to learn from both immediate and long-term rewards rather than just focusing on actions individually. Actually, Q-learning is a value-based approach. The Q in Q-learning stands for quality. It represents the quality of taking a particular action in a given state. The notation of Q-value for each action state pair S, A is denoted as Q of S, A, which essentially represents the expected cumulative reward an agent can achieve starting from state S, taking action A, and then following the optimal policy thereafter. We are going to go a bit into the maths here, but don't worry. We'll again go over the equation using a visual example. During training, we initialize the Q values with zeros throughout our combination of the state action pair. How we update the Q values during training is as per the below equation. The new Q value for state S and action A is our former estimate of the Q value at the same state and action plus some learning rate which is usually 0.1 and the immediate reward plus the discounted value of the maximum Q value that you can get taking the optimal action. So this is max of A with Q of state S plus T comma A. So this is the maximum Q value of the new state that the action will take us into minus our former Q value estimation. Well, if this looks daunting, don't worry, we are jumping straight into an example. So here we have our three cross two grid world. Our mouse Jerry always start at the state zero comma zero. If it moves to a state with one cheese, he gets plus one. If he moves to the big cheese, he gets plus 10. If our cat Tom catches Jerry, then Jerry gets minus 10. The episode ends as soon as Jerry eats the big cheese or is caught by Tom. Now we have to establish what is known as a Q table. A Q table is the combination of all possible state and actions that can be taken. Think of the Q table as Jerry's cheat sheet for making decisions. Here we have six states and four possible actions in each state. So our Q table is six by four in size. And like we mentioned before, we initialize this Q table with zeros initially. All right, jargon alert. Q learning is what we call an off policy algorithm. In simple terms, we start with a high epsilon value, which determines how random your actions will be, making Jerry take mostly random actions. As Jerry learns, we decrease epsilon, making him take smarter actions. It's like learning to ride a bike. First with training wheels and then we're done. Whereas when we use the algorithm, we don't use high epsilon and then slowly bring it down. We use a fixed epsilon. So off policy means that you train in a different way, but you use the algorithm actually in real settings in a different way. Okay, enough of this. Let's see an example. So Jerry starts at 0, 0 and then randomly decides to take an action. Let's suppose he moves to the right and gets to the small cheese. So we'll update our estimation of the Q value at 0, 0 given right as follows. So the former estimation of the Q value is 0 plus 0 0.1 which is a learning rate into the immediate reward. So the immediate reward is plus one since he got to the small cheese plus 
our gamma which is the discount factor which is 0 0.99 into the best possible q value in this case if we see the best possible key value is zero throughout because our initial table is all zeros minus our former q value estimate which is again zero so if we calculate then our q value estimate for state zero zero given with an action right is 0.1 so let's begin since the episode hasn't ended we continue and then from here jerry again takes a random action and he moves down but oh no he runs into tom so tom has caught jerry so we have to update our estimation of the q value for state 1 comma 0 and the action down so we use our formula again so q value of 1 comma 0 with down action is equals to 0 which is our former estimate of the q value for the state plus 0.1 the learning rate into the immediate reward and which is minus 10 in this case plus of gamma which is the discount factor 0.99 into now here also we know that the uh, the max of the q value for any optimal action currently is zero because the table was initialized with zeros minus our former estimate which was again zero if you calculate this then our q value estimate for this state action pair becomes minus one and the game is over but jerry learns from his mistakes so as you can imagine, as we continue to explore the environment, our Q value estimates will become better and at the end we'll have an estimate of the optimal Q function. That's it for this video. Next time, we'll dive into code and build our very first Q learning agent in Python using the gymnasium library. We'll go over two environments, frozen lake and frozen lake slippery. Excited to see you there. And leave a comment with any questions or ideas for future topics if you want me to explore them. Alright, bye-bye. See you in the next one.